We went to Bed Bath and Beyond, mm -hmm. and she jumped the line on accident. Like she like stepped right behind the person that was like at the checkout, uh -huh. and then she took mom, and then mom turned her head to the left and saw a long line. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> a long line. Um, in the back of the store, she was like, oh my God, I did not mean to cut. And the lady took her or whatever. And I was like, oh, I can't be standing by you. Listen, that reminds me. Have you seen Friends with Money? I have with Jennifer Aniston. Uh, I, I haven't. Honestly, I really couldn't recall. But I was like, if it was me, I would be like, excuse me, the line is here. But no one said anything to her. Yeah, there was, um, there's a scene from, in Friends with Money when Frances McDormand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is at um, Old Navy. And she's standing in line and there's a person at the cashier. That person walks away and these two people walk straight up to the cash register. And she's like, oh, no, I was waiting. Like, I was here. I was next. And they're like, the cashier's all, okay, wait, ma'am, let me take care of these people and then I'll help you. She's like, no, I remember. I was next. And then she walked into the door and busted her nose. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> like, she yells at people. Like, for some reason, she's just angry. I think she's like, that's uh, going through middle age. She gets angry or whatever. Yeah. Look at you fancy with your water. Let me take a picture of you drinking your water. My you. water. Water. It has got all these lemon lemon things in it. It smells good, though. Thanks, KJ, for the lemon. It smells good. <laughs> your nails look nice. Okay. Yeah, so I was just standing around as mom's muscle. So no one like, you know, try it with my mom <laughs> since she cut the line. What's today? Shit. Saturday, Friday, Sunday? Sunday, January 10th, 10 yeah. days into 2021. How is your year going? Seriously. After that fucking debacle at the at the uh Capitol building, and all those jackasses decided to act the goddamn fool and storm the Capitol. Listen, that was insane. And I was watching it on the news because I was I was up in the bay with your mother and she was like, turn on the news. She texted me. But before I even turned on the news, I was like, I asked the person's house that we were staying. I was like, can I drink some of your champagne? In the morning? Before she left for work, yeah. <laughs> okay. She was like, okay. And I was like, sweet. So I had put it in the refrigerator in the morning. Uh -huh. And then it might have been like 11 o'clock. And she mom was like, turn on the news. And I was like, I'm about to have some champagne because I knew we were leaving at 2. So I was like, let me just sit down. And I was just sitting there and drink. I drank a damn near bottle of champagne watching that bullshit so you watched the whole thing norman put it on i was tweeting the whole time i was live tweeting while it was happening yeah i saw um <laughs> he put it on as i was leaving he was like look at this and i was like insane i said now if that was us yep we would be laying there bleeding to death on the street i just couldn't tear my eyes away from it because I was like, this is ridiculous. And you, everybody's 100% right. That is like, if that was black or brown people, if it was a Black Lives Matter, if it was being led by black folks, death. But then I like how people pew, pew, like, pew. oh my God, did you see the tattoo on that guy's hand? He was Antifa. He was the one that was, I'm like, how do we know that it wasn't some, first of all, I didn't see any tattoo. Second of all, how do we know that somebody didn't, one of their people didn't just draw an Antifa symbol on their hand and, you know, try to blame somebody else. I'm so tired of all this conspiracy shit. I'm just done with this. I want it to be over. I want Pumpkinhead and Chief to be gone. I want him to leave this country. We've got 10 days. Yeah. We have 10 days to see what kind of but shit show he has. I, another I told you, I to told you when the election happened, I was like, when someone's about to lose their job, when they're going to get fired, when they got half the foot out the door, they going to burn the building down. They fuck shit up. That's why you got to get them out before they ruin things. Mm -hmm. And this guy... This is going down in history. This is historic shit that's happening right now. This is a movie. Oh, the angry president, it lost power, so he called his thugs, he called his terrorists, he called his alt-right people to come and act a fool and start bashing in heads. The funny thing is, they're arresting all the people Good. that are that did this, and a lot of them are saying, well, the president told me to do it. Yeah, the devil, fucking Hitler, shut up. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's not going to work. That didn't work in, at Nuremberg, and it's not going to work now. So... I was just following orders. No, that's not an excuse. Anyway, a bunch of ass clowns. So that's how your um your year's going. How was your week? That's not that's I'm not just how kidding. my year's going. I'm just kidding. No. But that I mean that's what fucking that's happened. What happened on Monday. That's what happened on Thursday. Was it Thursday? I thought it was let's see. It was Thursday, girl. Oh my god. In the middle of the week, who does this? And then these attacks that you know happened at local 
government entities like in California. You heard about the shit that happened in downtown LA. They no, attacked I didn't, a girl. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Yeah, uh huh. His supporters attacked a girl, beat up a black girl, snatched her wig off. They was beating the dog shit out of her. One of the Trump people stepped in and was like, "They're gonna kill you." Like he was a part of it and he egged people on. He was a fucking asshole. But when push came to shove, when they're about to end that girl's life, he stood in and shielded her. Well, you know what? That's the problem. It's a problem. Like, you're attacking random people on the street now. Yeah. Why? They were like, who did you vote for? Who did you vote for? None of your she- fucking business. That's exactly what she said. But you snatched my wig off and you're fighting me? Like she said she was in a crowd of like 30 or 40 of them. And they identified the guy, like he worked at like some car dealership in like South Bay somewhere. But oh, they identified the one that stepped in. But, you know, of course he lost his shit because he was a part he of it. He lost his job. Yeah, his job because he was They a part all of need it. to lose their yeah. jobs and they all need to go to prison. That is assault and battery mm-hmm. and attempted murder. It is. So aggravated assault. They need to be held on. I mean, they need to be charged with at least four counts. I don't know. I'm tired. I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of people. Like, honestly, the people that think they're smarter than everybody else are the ones that are the dumbest ones of all of them. Because they're the ones who are, they believe conspiracy theories. They're putting their own lives on the line oh, yeah. to back this idiot oh, that yeah. has been doing nothing but inciting violence and dividing the country and running the country into the fucking ground. This is division at its finest. Did you see that? One funny thing, this none of this was funny, but did you see the old lady who was getting helped down the stairs by the um by one of the SWAT people, one of the police at the Capitol? No. Like it looked like Nana went out, like Nana Trump was like, Oh yeah, let's do this. But when shit got real, she's like, Can you help me down the stairs? <laughs> it was time for me to go. <laughs> no, I didn't see Have that. Have you haven't seen that one? No. I don't want to see this shit anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired mm. of people who feel entitled to something. A president who does not give two shits about them. This man does not care about you. And when he leaves office, he's going to continue ranting and raving and posting comments on fucking goddamn Instagram. Or I'm sorry, on fucking Amazon. He's going to be on OnlyFans. Yeah. (laughs) You know, (laughs) ranting about how he was robbed. You're all special. They're (laughs) taking this from us. I was like, shut the fuck up. I was watching it on CSNB. uh, CSNBC. Yeah. And the guy, he was like, "Stop stop the tape. Stop it. Yeah. Because all he was doing, he's like, go home. He said, go home. But then he's like, yeah, they robbed me of this election. I was cheated, blah, blah. It's like, you he's are gaslighting. All you're mm-hmm. doing is firing them up. And then yep. you're like, go home. You yeah. are a. F- I'm done talking about him. Okay. But um, it's actually funny because he, he is uh, affiliated with this person. But um, great. Anyway, um, how was your week? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, my week was cool. Oh, did we do intro? We didn't do introductions yet. No, not yet. Mm-hmm. But my week was good. Um, mm-hmm. it's as good as it fucking can be. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just getting in the house when it gets dark, staying away from large groups of white people <laughs> because it ain't safe. It's not okay. So I'm just getting my head down. Um, thank you to everybody who's like reached out and like asked about Beauty's biscuits. Um, I haven't heard anything back from the storefront. I think I need to call them next week because they said five days and I would hear something. Or at least they would have run my credit. How long has it been? Seven days today. Okay. And so I'll follow up with them um, this coming week to see WTF with my app. (laughs) My app? Or give mama back my money. Okay. I'm saying forty dollars Shit. Um, But Application fees are non-refundable, though. It said non-refundable. I saw that. But actually do it. Actually... They ha- oh you, run the you don't application? Know if they run it yet? No, they have it. Oh, okay. I get notified when anybody runs anything on my credit. Okay. So I'm waiting for the alert, and the <laughs> alert has not come yet. Oh. Meaning they have not done it yet. Okay. But whatever. So I'm just no news is good news. That's how I'm playing it. Okay. No news is good news. We're moving forward. I'm just trying to stay as positive as I can be and not let all this darkness and despair, you know, weigh on me the way it has been weighing on the fucking country. Do you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I'm Sunny Hepburn. <laughs> and I'm Brandy Fleeks. And this is Book, Book of, of Lies. The podcast. It's Bolt, bitches. Honkity, honkity, honk. <laughs> well, my week has been productive. I, honestly, I'm done. I'm done following all this bullshit that's happening. Um, it's, it, I refuse to give it any more energy. Any of my energy, because 
I'm focusing on me. I'm focusing on moving my life in the direction I want it to go. And this shit on TV has nothing to do with my life. So um, when the transition of power happens, then maybe I'll turn the TV back on the news. Unfortunately, my husband is obsessed with watching this fucking shit show unfold. And he will comes to me and says, hey, did you hear this? And, did you, and I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I'm done. I choose happiness. I choose peace of mind. I choose creativity. I choose not to focus on that shit anymore. I'm not giving it any more freaking energy. So what I did do was I, my bike came. I put my bike together on Saturday or Sunday. I've been riding on my spin bike, doing with Peloton. I have um, job. jumped into the year of yes, Shonda Rhimes, um, rides and meditations I did that one. yeah 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 I'm trying to do dry January I did drink wine on Friday night because I had three girls at my house my girl likes to party all the time Running around party it. all the time party all the time are y'all to uh, consume cannabis um yeah I can do that but um I feel like really productive today I recorded two YouTube videos that I'm gonna edit and one will go up this week and the next one will go up next week. So I've got two videos in the can. And, okay, so while I was doing the Peloton, I did, you know, Peloton spin class yesterday. And I did one of the ones with Tunde. And she was talking about, um, you know, being the CEO of your life. And, like, there's a bunch of motivational speakers that I, that I like, follow and listen to and all this stuff. And they're always talking about being the CEO of your life. And so she was like, you know, she had lost 70 pounds and she created her, her, you know, um, her mission statement. I was like, you know, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. That's something that like has been, they've been, I've been like hearing about for like 10 years, but I never like created a personal mission statement. Do it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a personal mission mission statement this week. And I'm also doing, you know, the uh, manifestation program um, with manifestation coach. And so I have my first call. It's a group call, but I have my first call tomorrow. Yay. And so um, I'm excited about that. And that's about it. So I'm like, I'm I'm done. I'm done with all this political bullshit and negativity that's going on in the world. And I'm focusing on improving myself, my surroundings, my life. I am creating the life that I want to live. And it has nothing to do with politics. Well, that's good because you can only control what you can control and you can control your life. You can't control the, the stuff that's going on in the news. Exactly. And it's just a dark hole. Because once I turned it off, it I was okay. Exactly. I'm not giving it any more energy. It's all over Twitter. And I'm just like, I'm not going to engage. There's so many stupid people on Twitter. <laughs> there was this one person that was like, oh my God, Antifa, Antifa let, you know, stormed the, the Capitol. And they're trying, and Twitter and Facebook banned the president and they're trying to impeach him so he can't run in 2024. I'm like, that's you are a nut job, lady. Like, who cares? Nobody fucking cares. Um, and she was like so upset, and I was just like, "You keep drinking that Kool Aid. Have fun." That's what it is. It's the Kool Aid. But we're fuck, fuck the Kool Aid. We're not interested in that. Connect with us on social. Connect with us on Twitter at Book of Lies Pod on Instagram and Facebook at Book of Lies Podcast. Um, check out our website, Book of Lies Podcast dot com. There you could listen to all of our episodes. Find where you would like to listen and our social handles and um, send us an email, send us an email at book of lies podcast at gmail.com. And you can send us an email about whatever you'd like to chat about. And if you have it in you, go ahead and meet us on Patreon. We're wanting to grow our Patreon family and you are the next member. So go ahead and meet us on Patreon. You are the next member. for the low, low price of $2. We'll send you love letters, stickers, and you'll get commercial-free episodes every week. Other than that, Brandy, what are we going to talk about today? Because mm. I don't know. I'm really excited. So today, we are talking about a person who has been in the news for the past four years. Well, yeah, in the past, he's been in the news for the past four years. Um, he was affiliated with the Trump campaign. He was indicted for being affiliated with the Russia collusion, uh, Paul Manafort. Ooh, 
I've heard of that name. I don't know very much about him. Well, Paul John Manafort Jr. Okay. Was born April 1st, 1949 in New Britain, Connecticut to Antoinette Maria Manafort. His maternal grandfather was an Italian immigrant who came to this country in the early, I think he said early 20th century. Um, but Paul Manafort was not a man of means. His family was not wealthy. He, you know, he grew up like everybody else, an average Joe. He went to college. He got into politics when his father ran for and became the mayor of New Britain in 1965. And he was mayor until 1971. After his mayorship ended sometime later, about 10 years later, he was charged with perjury in a corruption scandal. The daddy? Uh Uh-huh. In 1981, but he was never convicted. Uh, Paul went to college, became a lawyer, And after graduating, he served in the White House under Gerald Ford after Nixon's resignation. Then he went on to work on the Reagan campaign in 1980. And after which he entered the lobby scene and became a lobbyist and a campaign consultant. What exactly is a lobbyist? Lobbyists are people like the NRA, people who are spokespeople for the NRA who basically try to get government officials to do what they want them to do. So like the NRA, certain things. Uh-huh, to, you know, gun control. Oh, we don't want gun control, blah, blah, blah. That's the NRA. Um, like the ATF, you know, alcohol, firearms, tobacco. They, you know, oh my God, there's a hole in my shirt. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> just stick your finger through it. I just, I was like, I saw you. Yeah, you can, you can totally sew that. It's totally fine. <laughs> Random. Okay. Anyway, yeah, they um they they lobby politicians. Did you see? Thank you for smoking. Yes and no. Well, um, the people that put the Aaron up. Eckert was a lobbyist got for it. the for tobacco, big tobacco. Um, in that movie. Shit, he got like all these nicotine patches put on him. Right, because he was trying to convince the government that oh there's nothing tobacco doesn't hurt people it doesn't cause cancer that's what they've been told that's what they've been trying to say for years and years and years but yeah he became a lobbyist and a campaign consultant and he actually worked with formed a company with roger stone who also worked on the trump campaign and was also indicted was he indicted or well he was under investigation and they formed a company called black manafort stone and kelly um, also known as BMSK. And through his company, they met all kinds of politicians and high level business people. They actually did work with Donald Trump before, prior to the Trump campaign as a businessman before this. This is before the, the bullshit. Yeah, this is the eighties that we're talking about right now. Okay. So, um, in the eighties, he was involved with crafting the images of politicians and he worked with politicians both in the, in the country and out of the country. Their company, BSK, worked with all kinds of corrupt politicians Great. who had bad reputations in the United States to help them improve their image and basically to help them try to get funding from government um, organizations, hmm. from United States government organizations. So he worked with shady people, like Lyndon Pendling, who was a prime minister of the Bahamas, who used to receive payoffs from Colombian drug cartel bosses like Carlos Lader. Like who? Carlos Lader is who the character Diego in Blow was created after. Okay. Maybe he was also involved with Pablo Escobar. Lyndon Pendling, not... Um, Carlos Lader was involved with Pablo Escobar, but um, he also uh, was... He worked for dictators, warlords, regimes that were known for violating human rights he's, in other countries. He's working with them. Yeah, to help improve their images and help them secure funding from the United States government. Boy, bye. He worked with Jonas Savimbi, who was an Angolan politician who was involved with the communist, <laughs> the communist regime over in um, the USSR, because that's what it was at the time. He worked with Ferdinand Marcos, who was also, um, he was basically kicked out of being the president of, of the Philippines. 
Melda Marcos' husband, the one that used to ask, how many pairs of shoes do you own? He spent all his money, the government money, the you know, on himself. That was the chick that was on, I think they did an episode of um, uh, Dirty Money. And Melda Marcos? The, the Philippines thing. Mm-hmm. Probably. He was the president and uh-huh. she had all kinds of shit and uh-huh. designed the house uh-huh. and it was all fucking fancy. Right. That, that was an episode of Dirty Money, I believe. Okay. Well, there it is. And in the 80s, they, the company BMSK was listed in the top five of lobbying firms taking money from human rights abusing regimes in a report called The Torturer's Lobby, issued by the Center for Public Integrity. Um, and in the 80s, he got rich doing this. He started living a lifestyle. Of, and again, he, he was not a man of means, you know, growing up. They didn't have money. So as soon as he started raking it in, he started spending it. Right. He funded his lifestyle and his family's lifestyles, bought um, apartments, bought all kinds of just ostentatious bullshit. Okay. Because um, <laughs> I was going to say, go ahead and enjoy your money. Because listen. No, no. Okay. It was extreme. To Can the I talk about it- my 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 glam i was like oh i'm gonna have tea today and i was like i'm so sick of putting my tea like my water in the microwave i really need to buy a tea kettle and i've been wanting to buy a tea kettle forever i was like let me go to amazon i'm gonna buy a tea kettle and i still didn't do it i was just like you can spend 20 dollars on yourself for a fucking tea kettle i'll show you the one that i want um <sighs> it's very fancy and you can put a flower um the, the flowering tea in it and it, the flower blooms in the teapot i ain't that fancy that's the one i want i just want hot water <laughs> on the like, I don't want to have to throw in the, the microwave. Stuff. Yeah, it just it takes longer. That's what's funny. Well, then you could plug it up and just bloop and you know. Oh, you want an automatic tea kettle? I mean, an, an electric tea kettle. Yeah. So you don't want the one that goes on the stove. You want nope. The, you want the ones that they use like in the Philippines. Probably yeah. and it'll burn my mouth off if I drink it too fast. Well, if you immediately drink it right after you pour it. I know. I actually made some like hot tea or whatever, and it came right out of the thing, and that shit burnt my tongue off. Like half of my tongue fell off. <laughs> like, it was like, ah, 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 like I burned my fucking tongue off. I was just like, why did I do this to myself? Yeah, for you a week. Let it cool off for a minute. Okay, don't sorry. be patient. And plus, you give your t- your tea time to steep. Yeah, I know. It only takes like three minutes to steep the tea, though. But speaking of tea, I've been binging. I finally found season one of the Real Housewives of Potomac. So I started watching this. I'm watching fucking Karen and like Aunt with D. the terrible wigs. Do you see her yeah, wigs are yeah. awful and her weave? Yeah, but like when she's like aunt, what does she call her? Aunt D or whoever the fuck she is? She was like the auntie was like this tea is warm. You don't serve warm tea. Who said that? Her husband's aunt. Okay, and she was like, get her some hot tea because apparently it's rude to not serve piping hot tea. I'm sorry. Is she British? Nope. They're the ones who decide what kind of tea at what temperature. Well, not in Potomac High Society, not Aunt D. <laughs> Listen, they, none of them are like, Karen was born on a farm. So That's whatever. That's what she said. That's what she said. I think it's hilarious how they, they just like, they put on these fucking airs. Oh, well, you know, I'm the grand dog. Bitch, you're born on a farm. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> you might have come up, but don't fucking act like you're hoity-toity. Bitch. I'm married to the Black Bill Gates. The you are Bill. not the Queen of England. <laughs> she must think she's the queen of England. She Ugh. does. Anyway. Uh, yeah, he started living a lavish lifestyle. Like, super stupid lavish. To the point where it was ridiculous. Um, in the late 80s, he used his connections. The connections that he made, you know, by lobbying. He used connections with the housing and urban development. Or HUD. To secure funding for a rundown New Jersey housing development refurbished it and through so doing was able to collect $31 million in rent subsidies over 15 years. He did this through his company, BSK. Nobody wanted this fucking refurbished development. He just like finagled his way into to getting money. He said in 1989 that his company, um, like he, 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 he was called to testify in a um a hearing in Congress or whatever over about what he was doing and basically he admitted he was like yeah um what you could say we're doing is engaging in influence peddling mm. influence peddling is a practice of using one's influence 
in government or connections with people in authority to get favors or preferential treatment for either other people or for yourself, usually in return for payment. So that's basically what they did. He was like, oh, yeah, um, why don't you hook us up? We can get, you know, this this project because it was basically the projects funded and we'll be making thirty one million dollars on this on this project now. A project that nobody asked for. Okay. Then in the 90s, he sold, they sold the company and he started another company. This time, um, he hires a guy named Rick Gates to be his right hand man and he dives into foreign lobbying and he's basically immerses himself in the Ukrainian government. Why? <laughs> Why? In 2005, he started working for a Russian oligarch named Oleg Deripaska, who apparently was a nasty piece of work. He is aligned with Putin. Eek. This guy, he has a global empire that involves aluminum and power companies. So he owns a company and it's called A-L-R-U-S, Al Rus, or Rus Al, R-U-S-A-L. And this company, you know, operates globally. He pays Paul Manafort millions of dollars to basically install political people, political um, officials in the countries where he has business interests, where he's operating his Rush Al company. Um, and Paul Manafort is collecting tens of millions of dollars to do this. He's just happy. Just like, <sighs> yeah, working I- with this man, he, Deripaska also loaned the company millions of dollars. He also had invested millions of dollars into an equity fund called Pericles Emerging Market Partners LP, which Paul Manafort and one of his former business partners launched in order to go after investments in Eastern Europe. So they're trying to get investors in Eastern Europe, but Deripaska ends up being the only investor in this company, hmm. in this, this fund. He also opens several LLCs. That's... That, 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 that. Yeah, several. Why? He has, he has more than two LLCs. That's expensive, but if you got the money, I guess, why not? He's making money hand over fist, millions of dollars. Deripaska is paying him tens of millions of dollars to help political officials get elected in these countries where he has Influence. businesses. Yeah. So he also goes to work for this corrupt politician called Viktor Yanukovych. Hmm. Oh, by the way, so um, this, Sorry. my sources here are um, American Greed and, of course, the ever-knowledgeable uh, Wikipedia um, and then several articles. This episode and all of our episodes are sponsored by Wikipedia. <laughs> Give them money. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, okay, so before he, he starts working with Paul Manafort, they describe Viktor Yanukovych as being... Basically looking like no more than like a, a factory boss. Like he wears a suit that doesn't fit. <laughs> the buttons don't button right. <laughs> you know, he doesn't look very polished. Yeah. He just looks like the grumpy man that comes in and yells at his workers. Okay. After he starts working with Manafort, his suits are tailored. Oh. They're good looking. He's smiling. He's waving. He's fucking schmoozing he you know he becomes a likable character interesting which is Manafort's job that's his he that's what he does he he helps political candidates political uh people improve their image right so he did this for Yanukovych at the time Yanukovych was um running for office in Ukraine and he lost yeah so they hire Manafort to help him win. Well, it's like, dude, get a suit that fits, maybe smile a little bit, put on some nice shoes. That's not the type of people they are in Ukraine. They're hard. They're rough, yeah. right? I I get it. That's not something that's important to them, but it's important to someone who's voting. Right. Plus, Yanukovych is a pro-Russian Ukrainian candidate. Mm. Ukraine is like, no, we're not we interested. don't want to be, yeah, yeah. We, have, we have nothing to do with Russia anymore. Been there, done that. Right. <laughs> But he is a pro-Russian candidate. Well, Manafort helps him win the election. Okay. So he becomes president of Ukraine. Interesting. He ran against a woman, Yuria uh, Tymoshenko. She is a um, pro-Ukrainian candidate. She wants the Ukraine to join the EU. She wants the Ukraine 
to join NATO. And she's like, okay, we, Ukraine does not need to be involved with the Eurasia Customs Union, which is led by Russia. Right. She's like, no, you know, no to Russia. Yes to Ukraine. After he wins, Yanukovych has her tossed in prison. What? He has her tried and tossed in prison. What a dick. This, this shit, they're corrupt over there. They're like, oh, you almost won, bitch. You uh-huh. shouldn't have fucking Pretty ran much. against me. Yeah. He he doesn't like her because, she, again, she's pro-Ukraine, anti-Russia. He's pro-Russia. And she basically, she could have beat him. Yeah. She she's almost threat. beat him. She's a threat. She's a threat. He has her tossed in for then. Is she in jail still? She gets, no, she's out now. She's she's holding office in Ukraine now. This is in the, uh, this is the 90s. Okay, this is the 90s. I was, Actually, this is the early 2000s. But Paul Manafort is not only getting paid by Yanukovych, he's also getting paid by a bunch of Russian oligarchs, rich people who hold influence in politics mm-hmm. in in Ukraine and Russia. He's getting millions and millions of dollars from these people to get to get Yanukovych elected. So it's like Yanukovych is paying, the oligarchs are paying, so he's just getting like he's like, okay, give me the money. They paid him more than fifty five million dollars. Shit. The money he made was all under the table and it was funneled through a secret offshore bank accounts. I said A, but it was funneled through multiple bank accounts in places like the Seychelles, Cyprus, maybe Sweden, Cayman Islands, probably. Um, And in this country, there is an act called the Foreign Agents Registration Act. It was enacted in, I believe, 1938 during... Um, World War II, when uh, a lot of Nazi propaganda was being disseminated in this country by the German American Bund. German American Bund? Uh huh. What is the Bund? That's just what they called their group. It was basically a bunch of German immigrants who came over, and they were they were sympathetic to the Nazi Party. Blech. So they were. Um, you still haven't watched. Um, Penny Dreadful, City of Angels. Nope. There actually is, this is around that time. It's like the 1942, I think, mm-hmm. in this show. But there is a character who, he basically um, forms a German-American bund in the in the show. He's a, a Nazi sympathizer. Of course he is. Well, he's a Nazi. He's a German-American person who, who moved over here during World War II or right before it. Um, but anyway, so the German-American bund was disseminating lots of Nazi propaganda and so this, um, the, the Foreign Agents Registration Act was enacted to basically, if an organization in the United States was doing business with the government, the uh, foreign government or government officials overseas in other countries, they had to register to um, basically, it would put them on the United States' radar as to who might be disseminating misleading information and propaganda. About their country. So if I wanted to do business with some government officials from the Bahamas, I would have to register just saying, hey, by the way, I'm doing business with the Bahamas. Right. With the Bahamian government or a government official. BT dubs. This is what's happening. Right. Um, Because you're working on their behalf. And a lot of times you're working within this government. You're basically being a liaison. Oh. And so you could be disseminating propaganda from the Bahamas, even though, I mean, it's the Bahamas, but again, they the Bahamas drama. has a bad, yeah. They got drama. They have there. a bad reputation in their government because yeah. their government is corrupt. Yes. Um, so. I've heard lots of drama. Right. So FARA, F-A-R-A, the Foreign Agents Registration Act, when people are working with government officials or the government of another country, they have to register. Okay. He didn't do it. Okay. So he's operating under the table and he's operating under the government. Basically, he's being super, super fucking shady. Super shady. Super shady. Being straight clandestine about the shit. He's just like, I'm not, I didn't do anything wrong. I just didn't tell you guys what I was doing. And, no, he didn't say he was do, wasn't doing it. He knew what he was doing. He knew he was doing wrong. And he was, and he said he was trying to do it as secret as possible. Oh, he admitted this. Because he was accepting millions and millions of dollars. He was also not claiming taxes on that money. So this is this is what he did. Okay, all that money was under the table, offshore bank accounts. He got paid more than fifty five million dollars, and then he was able to shave off six million dollars in taxes off of that money. The money that he earned from them, because 
it was funneled through offshore bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't being documented because like in the, you know, in the United States, if you get a deposit of more than $10,000 in your account, they notify the IRS. Mm -hmm. Your bank does. Anytime that there's a deposit more than $10,000. Money, money, money. And so in order to avoid that, you're going to have offshore bank accounts because they don't tell your government what you, how much money's in there. Right. But again, he was spending money hand over fist. When um, Yanukovych had Yulia Tymoshenko arrested and imprisoned, his reputation basically like went into the toilet. I bet it did. Because again, she was for the people, for the country, and he, you know, was pro-Russia. So people started fucking rioting and revolting. And in Kiev, there were riots. Yeah, 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 yeah. There were riots and there were there was a revolution and he left the country. The president of Russia, I mean, the president of Ukraine had to leave his country. He fled to Russia. And... When he did his estate. Okay, so, you know, Ukraine is a poor country. Right. And you have a president who is living in a three-story fucking, Mansion. like, 500,000, you know, fucking acre. I don't know how many acres it was, but it was huge. If you saw the picture of this thing, it's fucking huge. It's like a gigantic mansion. It's like the fucking royal palace. They opened up his house to the public when he left the country and you could see all this opulence in his house. It was ridiculous. Like the president of a country should not be living this way, especially the president of a poor country. Yeah. It was ridiculous how much money that he was making because again, these Russians were funding his presidency. Yeah. So he bounces and the money stops coming in from Ukraine to Manafort. Okay. Okay. So now he's like, oh, what do I do? But he doesn't stop spending money. He continues spending money. Right. And so he has to figure out a way to continue getting money. What is he? What do you think he does? He hollers at his partner Putin and see what kind of... Or he, I don't know. No. Trump? He starts applying for fucking loans. <laughs> <laughs> Why? He goes the route of so many fucking fraudsters and applies for loans. Oh gosh. Okay. 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 Come on. So, okay. Before this happens, okay. In two, 2006, one of his LLCs buys an apartment in Trump Tower for 300, I mean, for $3.7 million. Mm-hmm. Then in 2012, he buys a $2 million brownstone in Brooklyn and he buys a, a loft in Soho for $2.8 million. Why is he, why are you guys buying all these things? He buys property in Florida. Okay. And he starts spending millions and millions of dollars on antique rugs. Paul, get your life in order, bro. And apparently he just likes these fucking rugs. Like he buys these rugs. He rubs his butt on it like a fucking dog rugs. does. Like Nora had the audacity we're going down the stairs. She sat down and rubbed her ass on my floor before she walked down the stairs. I said, bitch, do you need to go outside? How dare you? Right in front of me. She sat down and was like, skid? God. Yuck. Ugh. Yuck. Dog butthole. <laughs> Ugh. All right. He drops millions of dollars on clothes, on suits. Buys a $15,000 ostrich skin <laughs> bomber jacket. Ostrich skin? Ostrich skin. What a jerk. And again, he's very ostentatious about his fucking, his lifestyle. And he likes to live very opulently. His family also is living opulently. So he's funding his family's lifestyle. He's funding his own lifestyle. And now the money stops coming in. Yeah. So to keep the lights on, he gets some loans. So, yes. So... In December of 2015, he starts applying for loans. He lies on his loan documents. He changes. In, his company has $638,000 in losses. Okay. He changes the statement. He, he like converts it to a Word doc, creates a Word doc, and shows that he's got a $3 million profit. Or was it a billion? I think it was a billion dollars. It was a bunch of zeros and I, I didn't... Uh, I think it was a billion, three billion dollars in profit, profit that he put on a statement. 
He applies for a fucking loan. He gets $25 million in fucking loans. Like, what the fuck? Okay, so in 2012, he starts taking out home equity loans. So even before 2015, when he starts applying for, like, these aren't even equity loans. He's applying for business loans. In 2012, he starts taking out home equity loans. He has seven loans at a total of $19.2 million in 2012. $19.2 $19.2 million on three properties in New York. And him and his son-in-law have holding companies. His former son-in-law, because the guy and his daughter are now divorced. But his former son-in-law, they, they own a holding company. They own holding companies, more than one. Plural. Plural. And they own these three properties, and they take out $19.2 million on these properties. Then in 2015, he transfers the Trump Tower apartment that he bought with through that LLC, through mm-hmm. one of the LLCs. He transfers that apartment into his own name, claims it as his primary residence, and that's how he starts getting tax breaks because he's saying that that is his primary residence. Meanwhile, he's also saying that one of his Florida properties is his primary residence because Florida doesn't have income tax. Okay. <laughs> so he's collecting, I mean, he's getting tax breaks in Florida. So he's claiming that two residences are his primary residences. Because getting tax They breaks. both can't be your primary. No. It's one or the other. My but friend. he's filing separate taxes in separate states. Is it the IRS global? The IRS, look, they don't catch on to this stuff until like years later. Yeah. <laughs> and then by this time, you're going to have massive, massive, massive debt. Yeah. To them and to your fucking loan officers, to your, the loan companies that you're built, that you're, you know, you owe. He, as of 2017, he owes $12 million on home equity loans that he's taken out on all these properties. Okay. One of his properties, he took out a $6.6 million loan, which was worth more than the value of the property. How is that possible? Because he lied on the, t- the applications. <laughs> And that bank that he loaned, it was the Bank of Chicago, that bank, that $6.6 million loan that they gave him was one quarter of the bank's profits that they had. So basically, they're giving him their money. Like, literally, you, a quarter of your money is gone now because you gave it to this man who lied on this loan document saying that his house is worth more than what you gave him mm-hmm. and it was worth less. Right. So, yes. There's that. Also... Around this time, that company that he had started, the the fund, Pericles, that Oleg Deripaska had invested in, that shit goes bust. Mm -hmm. So Deripaska's like, I want my fucking money. Right. You owe me money. I'm coming after you. Give me my money. I will kill you. So 2015 rolls around and the orange clown is running for president. Mm. He's like, I know where I can get some money. <laughs> I know where I can get some money. So, oh gosh. Paul Manafort finagles his way into a job as a campaign consultant. He writes a letter to the Trump campaign saying, I worked, because he did, he worked on the Reagan campaign. He worked for Gerald Ford. He started in Washington during Ford. That was the 70s. So yeah, he's been in office. I mean, he's been in Washington now for more than 40 years. Right. So he writes a letter, you know, I've done this and this and this. And he does. He has all these accolades because he actually did this work. Right. And he says, I'll work for free. Fuck. So, of course, I'm going to hire you as my campaign consultant because you're going to work for free and I'm going to get elected. Right. Because he got these fucking people elected. Yeah, he did. (sighs) So. He's working for free for Trump. But now he has a way back in with all these other old Washington connections. Mm -hmm. So he starts making moves. Money moves. He also has connections with the Russians. Of course he does. And he's like, I'm going to make good with Deripaska. Hey. He contacts him. He's like, hey, so I'm working on the Trump campaign, you know. Um, I know I owe you all this money, but I can get you information on, you know, polling information about the voters and basically that's how they got an in with that whole Russian involvement in the 2016 election. Collusion. 
collusion, yes, basically. Maybe it wasn't Trump's idea, but he had a leg up with fucking Manafort at the helm. Um, But Paul Manafort resigns in August of 2016 before the election. And... Robert Mueller starts investigating, or Mueller, however you Mueller, isn't it? It's the, I think it's Mueller, but people pronounce it Mueller. He starts investigating Manafort and his connections to Russia. And they uncover his tax and bank fraud, his hiding of money from working with Ukrainian leaders, and their secret lobbying. However, the FBI started investigating him in 2014, way before he even got involved, way before Trump even announced his fucking candidacy, Right. They had been collecting information on him because of his income reports and because of his his ties to Russia and the Ukraine. Right. On January 19th, 2017, right on the eve of the inauguration, Paul Manafort was under active investigation by multiple federal agencies, including the CIA, the NSA, the FBI the Director of National Intelligence, and the Financial Crimes Unit of the Treasury Department. So he already had five He's people in on, trouble. on his ass before this. But once they realized that he was involved with the elections and, you know, this whole thing, then, then he got on Mueller's radar. Mueller's radar. Um, the investigation were based on the intercepted Russian communications as well as his financial transactions. And it was later confirmed that he was wiretapped by the FBI before and after the election. Mm. And that includes a time when he was in direct communication with with Donald Trump. Right. So on October 30th, 2017, he was arrested. Paul Manafort was arrested by the FBI. And um, after he was indicted by a federal grand jury as part of the Mueller investigation. Uh Why did he quit working for the Trump campaign? I don't remember. But I believe it was because Donald Trump started doing what he was, what he does best, <laughs> running his fucking mouth. <laughs> so okay, the indictment was against uh, Manafort and his his right hand man Rick Gates. They were charged with engaging in conspiracy against the United States, engaging in conspiracy to launder money, failure to file reports of foreign bank and financial accounts, Ooh. acting as an unregistered agent of a foreign principal because he didn't fucking register with Farah, making false and misleading statements in documents filed and submitted under the Farah Act and making false statements. And the prosecutors were saying that he laundered more than $18 million that he received from um, for lobbying and consulting with the pro-Russian government and Viktor Yanukovych. What a creep. Look at him. Uh huh. He pleaded not guilty to those charges on that day, October 30th, 2017. And the U.S. government asked the court to set his bail at $10 million and Gates is at $5 million. Of course, they fucking made bail like that. Of course. And they, they um, were placed on house arrest because they, you know, the prosecutor was like, they're flight risk, your honor. So they, I love when old white men go to jail they have to stop dyeing their hair because there's no hair dye. <laughs> when that fool Paul Manafort went to jail, he was dark brown, <laughs> came out oh so gray. <laughs> so Rick Gates sang like a fucking canary. But he spilled all the beans. He told them about Ukraine lobbying and dealings. He admitted to lying to the investigators about the business. And Paul Manafort was like, well, I wish he, I would have hoped that he, he was a stronger character than that and wouldn't have wouldn't have done that, but I'm not guilty. I'm not pleading guilty. <clears throat> June 8th, 2018. He was also indicted for obstruction of justice and witness tampering. <laughs> Him and one of his, his friends um, was also fucking uh, indicted for obstruction of justice and witness tampering because he did. Him and his friend were trying to get people to say, well, just tell them that all our dealings were legal. We did everything legally. What you didn't, because you're a fucking liar. Just make something up. So these charges involved allegations that he attempted to convince others to lie about an undisclosed lobbying effort on behalf of Ukraine's former pro-Russian government. Since it occurred while he was under house arrest, the judge revoked his bail. And on June 15th, 2018, 
ordered him to go to fucking jail. <laughs> He's a fucking idiot. So he went to jail to the Northern Neck Regional Jail in Warsaw, Virginia. Mm. <laughs> And he, of course, got VIP fucking, he got the VIP section. He was kept in solitary for his own safety. Um, June 22nd, his efforts to have money laundering charges against him dismissed were rejected. And basically, there were so many indictments against him that it was divided into two trials. He had a trial in Eastern District of Virginia, and he had a trial in um, Washington, D.C. So in Virginia, he was tried... On 18 charges, including tax evasion, bank fraud, hiding foreign bank accounts, financial crimes uncovered during the special counsel's investigation to the Russia collusion in 2016 election. Um, the trial began on July 31st, 2018. And the jury found him guilty on eight of the 18 charges. The judge declared a mistrial on the other 10 charges. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was convicted on five counts of tax fraud, one of the four counts of failing to disclose bank accounts, and two counts of bank fraud. The jury was hung on three of the four counts of failing to disclose, as well as five counts of bank fraud. Four of them were related to the Federal Savings Bank of Chicago. That's the one that he owed that basically gave him a quarter of their money. Yeah, I wouldn't have given him shit. They're probably <laughs> like, this is such a risk, but, you know, he's such a good candidate. You know, and then it's these motherfuckers who don't give you your money and they don't care. And here's what. It's hard for people, like everyday people, to get a loan for $200,000. Meanwhile, they gave him a $6.6 million loan. Stupid. But again, he doctored his fucking, his, his documents. So there's that. Uh, Mueller's office, they were like, okay, so he should probably get a sentence of 20 to 24 years. Which was you know, in alignment with the federal guidelines. But on March 7th, 2019, the judge sentenced him to 47 months. That's not even four years. It's a month less than four years. Minus the nine months that he had already fucking served. Okay, 39 months. And basically he was saying, the judge said that the recommended sentence was excessive because Manafort had lived an otherwise blameless life. Bitch! Stop mm -hmm. it. Meanwhile, he was fucking taking money from warlords and fucking dictators. Yeah. Um, but the judge did note that Paul Manafort didn't express regret, regret for um, engaging for any he wrongful He did crime. or he didn't? didn't? He did not. Okay. He so, like, and that, what? That was in Virginia. His trial in D.C., however, goes like this. He was charged with conspiracy to defraud the United States, money laundering, failing to register as a foreign lobbyist, making false statements to investigators, and witness tampering. On September 14th, 2018, he entered a plea deal with prosecutors and pleaded guilty to two charges, <laughs> conspiracy to defraud the government, and witness tampering. He also agreed to forfeit to the government more than $22 million in cash and property and to cooperate fully with the special counsel that was investigating the Russia collusion. A tentative sentencing date for his guilty plea in D.C. was set for March 2019. Mueller's office stated in a November 26, 2018 court filing that Manafort had repeatedly lied to prosecutors about a variety of matters breaching the terms of his plea agreement Manafort's attorneys disputed the assertion, and on December 7th, 2018, the special counsel's office filed a document with the court listing five areas in which they say Manafort lied to them, which they said negated the plea agreement. The judge, Amy Berman Jackson, ruled on February 13th, 2019, that Manafort had violated his plea deal by repeatedly lying to prosecutors. You gotta stop lying, bro. He's a liar. Uh, in February 7th, 2019, in a hearing before um, the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, Judge Amy Berman Jackson, prosecutors speculated that Manafort had concealed facts about his activities to enhance the possibility of his receiving a pardon. They said he worked with his work with the Ukraine had continued after he made the plea deal 
and during the Trump campaign. So they're basically like, he was working with Russia while he was working for Trump. He met with his campaign deputy, Rick Gates, who had also pleaded guilty in the case, and with alleged Russian Federation intelligence agent Konstantin Kalimnik in an exclusive New York cigar bar. Gates said the three left the premises. This is where Gates saying like a fucking canary. He said the three left the premises separately, each using different exits. On March 13th, 2019, this all is directly from um, Wikipedia, by the way, this part. Jackson sentenced Manafort to 73 months in prison with 30 months concurrent with the jail time he received in Virginia for a resultant sentence of an additional 43 months in jail. 30 additional months for conspiracy to defraud the United States and 13 for witness tampering. Manafort apologized for his actions in this one. Okay, there's an (laughs) apology this time. Mm -hmm. So, he was jailed from June 2018 till May 2020. He got transferred to like three or four different different facilities and then they fucking released his punk ass on May 13th, 2020 because of COVID. On December 2020... Pumpkinhead in chief pardoned him. Of course he did. But um, Manafort had obtained his law degree and became a member of the bar in Connecticut back in the 70s when he, you know, during Nixon's uh, stint as president. And so he was required to, um, basically he was disbarred. He was disbarred. So he's no longer a lawyer. Great. Um, And that is the story of the unscrupulous lobbyist Paul Manafort. So he was pardoned, obviously. He was pardoned. Mm-hmm. Basically, they were trying to get it to where he, a part he couldn't be pardoned. That's why they were trying. They kept trying to bring more charges against him. Yeah, that would circumvent a pardon. It never happened. They 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 were dismissed the charges. So I didn't even mention them. Because <laughs> what's the point? Yeah, if it just doesn't even stand. Yeah, it's the America. 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 This is Trump's America. <laughs> it's almost over. It's almost oh, over. Well, when this episode comes out, it'll be 12 days. I mean, eight days. <laughs> so it'll be the 12th. So eight days and counting. Let's just hope for no more shenanigans. What was it? Seven days. Did you watch The Ring? Yeah, I watched The Ring. Okay. Well, you know, you and horror movies. You know, I'm a big I don't know which movies you've seen I'm and which furry, ones you haven't. but I did watch The Ring. Did you watch The Purge? The first one. Okay. That was the best one. <laughs> the rest of them were ridiculous. They were ridiculous. All right. Um, this is interesting. I do, like, <sighs> whatever. You get in bed with pigs, you get fucking dirty. I'm just going to say <laughs> it like that. All right? What's your thumbs up for the week? Oh, gosh. My thumbs up for the week is looking out for evidence of all my manifestations. What's your thumbs up for the week? Ooh, girl. Productivity. I really want to hit the Peloton this week. So that's on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. Um, We're launching Beauty's Biscuits Valentine's because Valentine's is coming up. And um, this will be our second year doing the Valentine's. So I was taking some pictures earlier of like all the dog biscuits. And I got some, um, I don't know if you follow Beauty's Biscuits at all. On um, Instagram. Yeah. I got Mandalorian cookie cutters. So I got the Mandalorian. The child. And I got the child. His name was like Bubba or something. Bubba da boom. I don't know. I watched the episode when she said his name. And he was like, who are you talking to? She's like, that's this motherfucker's name. <laughs> like, I don't know what you've been calling him, but this is his name. She's the child. It's not the child. It's something. But it starts with a B. I can't remember. And I watched it. And I was like, oh, he has a name. Finally. Yeah, because he was they able to talk him. to um, Rosario Dawson's character. She was the the chick. or what, I can't think of her name. I don't know. But she's a Jedi. Okay. And so she was like, oh, yeah, his name is this. And he, and he would start, the Mandalorian Mando was calling him that. And he was like, hmm? Uh, <laughs> like, oh, shit, that's really your name, huh? Oh, that's hilarious. I can't remember it, but if you nerds are listening, you guys know what it is. That's it, girl. Just just keeping my head down, trying to get through this. And I'm punching Nazis in the face. I see a Nazi, you're getting punched in the face, period. <laughs> <laughs> all right then <laughs> what was I I like to drink egg creams and fight Nazis yeah. <laughs> fucking Spider-Man yeah man um, hey that was uh, Spider-Man noir yeah <laughs> the dark one I'm so sorry I did not even acknowledge any of you listeners we are so rude 
Thank you guys for joining us. Hello, listeners. We know you're there. We love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. And um, guys, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It, it has to. I feel like this last week was hopefully the worst. I shouldn't even speak it, put it out of my mouth, but I'm just hoping that it gets better. That's all I that's all I can hope and wish for is a better day. Well, COVID's still out there. So that there's, shit there's too. That. <laughs> that shit too, man. Like it's rough. This is like the worst, but that's what happens when you put the devil in the office. He unleashes an unholy disease on all of us. Um, look, it's the fucking the Eldritch Terrors. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Eldritch right Terrors. Now. This is the endless. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's all we have for you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being here. Connect with us on social. Meet us on uh, Twitter at Book of Lies Pod, on Instagram and Facebook at Book of Lies Podcast. Check out our website, bookoflicepodcast.com. And thank you guys so much for being here. I am Sunny Hepburn. And I'm Brandy Flakes. And this was Book, Book of Lies, the podcast. It's Bulp Bitches. Mm-hmm.